Bishop of the Church of the Province of Kenya, CPK then. Hence, this year, on the 3rd of August, we turned 50 years. However, due to the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic, we were not able to observe the celebration then. This is the day God has given us. 50-year celebration are significant in the Bible as we have had the reading of Leviticus chapter 25. It is regarded as a season for retracing, recounting, reflecting, replanning, and liberation from the bounds of chains of every form of oppression, including poverty. In our case, we want to mark this day as a season for reigniting the mission agenda of the Anglican Church of Kenya. Our theme this morning is a wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. Those words were selected carefully because the Anglican Church of Kenya we operate within the nation called Kenya. We serve the populace of this country and we want to see each life thrive and become. Drawn from Leviticus 25 and John chapter 10, especially verse 10, SCK turning 50 gives us an opportunity to look back and consider the goodness of God. However, we must also use this momentous occasion to appraise ourselves. We need to celebrate our success, but also correct our mistakes and the failures. On the other hand, we must realign our plans with God's mission for the church and for this country. We have a duty to build a wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation. The ministry of the church revolves around wholesomeness. We have heard Jesus say, I have come so that you have life and have it in abundance, as the gospel was read to us. On the other hand, we exist not to com uh, compete with what government efforts are doing, but we exist to complement for both institution, government, and church as servants of the people, such as in our Republic, Kenya. Since the 50th anniversary celebrations uh, is an occasion for thanksgiving and review, allow me to quickly now point out what we must continue to do as we observe and roll out what we have called a wholesome church for a wholesome nation. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus states the problem before he came, uh, before he, he said what he came to do about it. In all research that seeks solutions that affect society, you have to state the problem before you research to find the solution. Here, Jesus identifies the problem as the thief who come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Three key objectives the thief intends to kill, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said he has come to undo what the thief came to do. The problem, therefore, is the thief who is out to destroy. A Christian psychologist by the name Dr. Lawrence Crabb, in his little book entitled Encouragement, says this, and I quote, the human spirit is guided by two deep longings, a longing for security, to feel secure, and a longing to be loved and to be accepted, a longing to belong. End of quote. These two deep longings do not derive, do not just drive individuals. They drive communities, institutions, families, and nations. When we find security, belonging, love, and acceptance, we, we thrive. But when we find ourselves in a situation of feeling insecure and belonging, we fall into a state of despair, hopelessness, and can lead ourselves to a mode of self-destruction, seeking to fight whoever we perceive as the one making us insecure. The thief Jesus is talking about is not someone out there. 
it is what we allow our minds and uh, let it into our hearts. It is an imagination in us. You remember when Jesus went to the wilderness to be tempted, normally as the imagination is our Satan walking alongside him. But it was a conversation in his mind. What he was allowing to come in, the thoughts, what the evil one was trying to show him. So it is always in allowing evil thoughts, negative thoughts, to enter our minds and our hearts, then we begin to believe and practice that which is not right and upright before God and before men. We create negative perceptions in our minds, and in this, the thief steals our minds. He kills our hopes and destroys us as people completely. St. Augustine of Hippo, one of the credited African theologians of the third century, said this, and I quote, The heart of man is forever restless until it finds rest in God. In other words, the heart are, is always seeking security, love, acceptance, and belonging. And until it finds it somewhere secure, it will forever be restless. And Augustine suggests it is only until we find that rest in God when we truly feel secure. We try to look for that security among our tribesmen. We try to look for that security through amassing resources. We try to look for that security through uh, gaining power and authority. But he says it will never satisfy until the day we find rest in God. Jesus concludes verse 10 by saying this, and this is what he came to do about the threat of the enemy whom he called the thief, whose intention is to kill, to destroy, and to steal. And this, this is what Jesus said, I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Insecurity is removed, love and a sense of belonging is guaranteed in him and we find everything else we need. That's why he summed up and saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. But when we allow the thief to steal our minds, we'll be looking for security in our tribesmen. That is why tribalism and negative ethnicities strive. We practice nepotism, giving favor and opportunities to those who we think can give us a cure because we are closely related, related to them. We enter into a mode of greed, trying to amass thinking when we have a lot, we can be able to secure ourselves. We get into a jealous mode, negative competition, wanting to outdo one another, and this drives us even to more insecurity. The more you have, the more you need to be secure. And that is a fact, and that is truth. Whenever we are blessed with many, that's when we can now look for security of all forms. We put electric fences around our compounds and everything else, thinking security will be enhanced. But this is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying your heavy loads, and I'll give you rest. This is the rest Jesus is talking about. When he gives us his love, his security, we feel completely secure. This uh, leads us to a place where guilt and shame are completely removed from us. For when we practice those negativities in our mind, the end product is it will lead us to do things that will bring shame to us. It will bring shame to our nation and to our people and even to our families because we shall kill, we shall mime, we shall do whatever else that uh, abhor is abhorrible before God. A wholesome ministry for a wholesome nation, therefore, seeks to lead us to turn to follow Christ. And when we follow him, the rest will be found. He will give us rest. He will give us security. He will give us an opportunity to become again. As we celebrate 50, this is a moment where the Bible says a renewal moment, a restoration moment, including restoring the land, resting everything else, 
and even returning back that which we have taken from others. It is a moment of leveling. I think even the law why we have leasehold of land, uh, beginning of 49 years, then we graduated 99 years, is so that there is an opportunity that that land can be taken back and redistributed so that those who are disadvantaged can be given an opportunity once again. We have heard, as Leviticus was read, that do not take advantage of one another if we want to thrive before God. What does this wholesome ministry look like? And how can it be achieved is our next point of discussion. What does it look like in practical sense? Wholesome is derived from the Hebrew word shalom, loosely translated as peace, but it's not just the absence of conflict of war. It is wellness, spiritual wellness, physical wellness, mental wellness, emotional wellness, and socially wellness. Within an enabling environment where harmonious relationships with God, man, and nature are nurtured. So we are talking about someone who fear God, belonging to a loving and caring society, who he himself or herself also care about. Someone growing in knowledge and use the skills developed, ideas generated for his and her own good and the good of others, generating also an opportunity for others to thrive. Emotionally stable, somebody who, has not, uh, who does not display a threatened and insecure personality, somebody who secures the environment not only for us but for future generations. So what are we talking about? When we talk of a wholesome person or a wholesome ministry that target the individual, we are looking at how can we change the individual person that is me and you today. And I said it has to begin with the heart. It has to begin by following Jesus and turning to him who will guarantee rest to us. How can it be achieved is our next question. We are imagining that it can only be achieved through the ministry of the local church and our service to people wherever they are. The ministry of the local church gives hope. And we are imagining the local church and redefining it to mean a place where we gather. Gathering are convened, such as the one we have every week. But we want to graduate to not only be weekly gathering, but uh, the church gathers people around it, both members and non-members, so that they initiate discussions about human, spiritual, socioeconomic well-being of every other person. We have uh, made a serious attempt as the Anglican Church, focusing on the local church to make it happen in practical sense. Two weeks ago, I was in Malindi, and we visited the local church being mobilized by the Anglican Church of Kenya through Anglican Development Services, and it is not even an Anglican church. It was a Beaver church. And when we went to that local church, they said they have uh, organized themselves such that after Sunday, they meet during the week various groups. They have one group called Mother to Mother, where mothers gather to do a Bible study, remind themselves about the role of a mother in the family, inculcating family values to these mothers, reminding those of them who are expecting children about their need for antenatal care, reminding them of their nutritional, uh, follow nutrition so that their children and themselves are healthy and are able to follow those who have given birth to children for postnatal care. This community drives around talking to each other. They meet on Wednesday to tend their kitchen garden and learn nutrition and they do promotive and preventive health. Men gather, they have uh, pens for their goats and they keep them for milk for the family. The entire community has gathered and formulated what they call a family uh, store for their grains so that they eliminate what they call the middlemen and they can store their grain until the market improves. They have in their midst what they call uh, market monitors 
people who can market where the market uh, is giving the best. And when I listened last Monday, the introduction of incubation centers, if we match this with the ministry around the local church, we have an opportunity to change, change lives and change them completely. That village in Malindi gave me hope that the local church has an answer to change lives and empower people. People cannot just be empowered by being given things. They are empowered when the heart and the mind are changed together. It is a mindset change. It is a change that enables somebody to locate his place and how they can take advantage of the resources around them. So the focus is the individual who has surrendered himself and herself to be committed to the will of God and to the commandment of God. This person will fear to do evil. This person will fear to mime others. This person will fear to steal. This person will fear uh, to mismanage resources entrusted to them at every level because the heart has a connection with God and God creates guilt and shame if you do against his will. To achieve this ministry, we must be centered, we must center it at the local church that gathers people on a daily basis. When we do that, we can together attain well-being. This leads the communities to identify problems, seek solution of the problems affecting them, and when together they are able to discuss, then they need to be empowered to become part of an enabling environment. What I want to propose, Your Excellency, and all members, is if we find this uh, workable, the role of the government therefore then will be providing policy, provide the infrastructure needed, and the church can mobilize and other institutions so that people are organized properly. When this happens, we can make use of our youth and can make them assets for the future. The church then becomes the empowering agent, the agent of change, the one that gives hope, not only because the individual is targeted, but the individual who forms the community is also targeted, and therefore the community begins to thrive. And when we do that, we shall attain a wholesome ministry, and the whole nation can change, and we can be able to look forward for a changed society. And this is the imagination of the person we have as I conclude. Somebody who has Jesus in the heart, the right knowledge in the mind, able to use the, the hands and his legs and his intellect to manipulate nature and put food on the table. Somebody who can generate more than food and put money in the pocket and therefore become self-sustaining. And we have this slogan, Jesus in the heart, the right knowledge in the mind, food on the table, money in the pocket, and maintain harmonious relationships. If we all attain that, our society and our nation will become a better place, and we shall all be proud to be called children of God in a good country called Kenya. This is what the Anglican Church commits ourselves to do as we go forward after we celebrate 50 years. And this is our prayer. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
matter how deep it is, he knows it. He's just waiting for you to call him. And he comes to you. His arms are wide, calling out your name. Come to me. Thank you very much, Your Grace, for inspiring the church to have a wholesome ministry to the wholesome nation. We continue to give thanks for members of the cathedral and beyond who have continued to be very generous to us even during this time of COVID-19. Your gifts that you give to the church have been received. And we thank you, thank you, thank you. Our baby numbers are known by now. If you'd like to give towards the offerings, your tithes, your thanksgiving, and the organ restoration, we are using the baby number 303036. 303036. And for the Children and Teen Centre, we are using 30, 30, 35. 30, 30, 35. Your Excellency, you'll be happy to know that the building I have continuously updated you on, it's now at the roofing stage. And if you can give me a few minutes after the service, just to walk you just outside for you to see what is happening around there. The cathedral members have been very generous and committed to this project for children. And allow me to invite the, our resource mobilizer and our children minister, uh, Reverend Paul Mashira, AKA Uncle Paul, just to help us understand what we are doing today being our gift Sunday. Today is when we put our resources together for the project. Uncle Paul. Good morning, everyone. You know, the Kenya Medical Research Institute, Kemri, like all other medical research institutes the world over, is working round the clock to develop a vaccine against the devastating COVID-19 virus. As they do that, here at All Saints Cathedral, we are also working round the clock to develop an equally important vaccine against an even deadlier pandemic, the moral decay and spiritual impoverishment of our children. We actually started off before Cambridge. Five years ago, we embarked on a journey of faith to construct the Children and Teen Centre at a cost of 1.2 billion, which we didn't have. The center's mandate is to equip the church in Kenya, the church in Africa, and we dare say the church in the world, with the requisite capacities to disciple the 21st century child into Christ-likeness. Through the center, as we celebrate our 50 year anniversary, the Anglican church in Kenya he is standing to be held to account to provide a vaccine that will work or that will prepare children against moral decay and imminent spiritual death of every child in this country and beyond. By the grace of God, as the Provost has mentioned, we have over the last five years raised and invested towards the CTC construction a total of close to half a billion Kenya shillings. And Your Excellency and members of the Cathedral, we have continued to do the construction work and to date we are about 55% complete. This coming Sunday, on the 8th of November, if I was in Sunday school, I'd have asked you to repeat after me. On the 8th of November at 2.30 p.m., we will hold our first all Saints Cathedral virtual fundraiser to help us raise 65 million shillings only 
to help us meet our 2020 target for the work that is going on. We would want to invite all members of the cathedral to log in, and not just members of the cathedral. During this time, we have had many friends from across the country and across the world. The login link will be provided on our website and in all our social media platforms, and it will be great to see all of you. Let me kindly request something. As many of us as will log in, please log in like a Balozi, a representative of the CTC. We have got beautiful CTC t-shirts, which we will be selling outside the church, and I ask every one of us to grab a, a, a t-shirt. Your Excellency, you look lovely in this one. <laughs> Margaret cannot resist you when you have this. <laughs> and finally, I have got a special request to make to you, Your Excellency. Every time you have come to the All Saints Cathedral and all the other churches of the world, okay, of Kenya, you always come to the main church. You have never visited Sunday school. Do you know what it would happen, what to do if you came to Sunday school? Amazing. And the good thing is that when you come to Sunday school, you don't even have to tell the archbishop. You just call me. I'll give you my number. <laughs> and I will connect you to Sunday school. And we will begin to change this world. We will begin to change this world as children are transformed into Christ likeness. Brothers and sisters, see you all at the fundraiser from Tandao. God bless you. I want to pray. I want to pray even as we give our offering and give towards the CTC. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. Thank you because you provide for us according to your riches and glory. And today, Father, as your servants give generously towards your work and even towards the CTC, I pray that, Lord, you bless them and that you'd increase in their lives and that in everything that they do, they will be blessed of you. We praise you and honor you for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We remain seated as we give. We'll give virtually. In case there's somebody who came with the physical offerings, there's a slot at the back where it can be dropped uh, later at the end of the service, the choir.
Lord's Lord is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. We remain seated for the announcements. Allow me, Your Grace and Your Excellency, to bring a few cathedral announcements. First is to publish the bans of marriage between the following people. Chimera, Kaingu, Mangale of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi, and Anne and I Misiko of Friends Church in Gong Road. This is the second time of announcing. We published the bands of Lemek, Angila, and Evelyn Mutunga of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. Vincent Ondieki Uduor and Jacinta Gatiri, both of All Saints Cathedral, Nairobi. Yuri Walter Uduor and Janet Njeri Kamau, both of ACK Gudisamal, Britain, Comorox. This is the the first time of announcing. If you know any just cause or impediment why this person should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you are required to declare that to us. A few other announcements. The virtual confirmation classes for those who missed the June class will start on the 14th of November at 6.30 a.m please register in our website. The virtual infant baptism classes will start on the 21st of November at 10 a.m. Please register through the website. The Thanksgiving and dedication of infant services will be held on the 14th November at 10 a.m. Kindly use our website to register. The Special Abilities Ministry is appealing for donations of used or new wheelchairs and any other devices kindly to deliver these donations to the cathedral. Uh, we have been reminded about the CTC next Sunday. Uh, let us get ready to put our monies together. One other service that we have opened on Wednesdays, we have our prayer service from 5.15 to 7 p.m. Every Wednesday, you're welcome here in the evening from 5 for a time of prayer. Please register in advance through the WhatsApp provided in the cathedral website. Our services will remain 8 o'clock 10 a.m., which are 8 o'clock is congregational service at the auditorium. 10 a.m. is the congregational youth service in the auditorium. 9.30, congregation in at St. Philip's Chapel, which is Kiso Hilly. At 11, we have the congregational deaf service at St. Philip's Chapel. Then in the main cathedral, we have a congregational and live service on KBC TV 47, YouTube and Facebook. And at 1.15, we have congregational and live services through YouTube, uh, Facebook at the main sanctuary. And lastly, we have the congregational uh, live stream through YouTube and Facebook at 6 p.m here in the main cathedral. I will come back after, um, the, after the Archbishop has um, made his remarks uh, to be able to guide you on how we will leave the cathedral. Kindly, uh, Colonel Rosemary, please come. Your Grace, and Your Excellency, it's a great joy for us to worship and celebrate together today 
and the church is a family that is knit within herself and beyond her boundaries. And so as we have been in this period of celebration of our golden jubilee, we have received a lot of goodwill messages, which I will share with us very briefly, just to acknowledge the networks, the partnerships, the family that we are about as the church and specifically the Anglican Church of Kenya. I begin by bringing to us the goodwill message from the most reverend and right honorable Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who sent his congratulatory message and the key to his message were these words. Kenya and the Anglican Church of Kenya has a very special place in my heart as it is in your great country that I came to experience what it means to be a follower of Christ. I pray that this will be a time of thanksgiving and of hope for the future of the province of Kenya and the nation of Kenya. We also received messages of goodwill from the General Secretary of the Anglican Communion, the Most Reverend Dr. Josia Idro Fayaron, who stated very specifically, the province of Kenya has prayed and will continue to pray a reading role in the communion. It is my prayer that the Lord will continue to read and bless the leadership of the primates, the bishops, and the lay leaders of this great province. It is my prayer that the next 50 years will see that more growth and development happens within the Anglican Church of Kenya as a province to the glory of God and in fact deeply the livelihoods of the people of Kenya. We also received goodwill messages from the chairman of the council of the provinces of Kenya, the Anglican Church of the, of the province of the continent of Africa. And this was his message to the primate, the house of bishops, clergy and laity of the council of the Anglican provinces of Africa, Kama, Kappa, we greet you, the Anglican province of Kenya. Kappa is very much impressed and encouraged by the strengths and achievements of the province of Kenya in all spheres of our ministry, in health, in education, in social development, pastoral and evangelism work. We are inspired by the numerical growth in membership and in the number of dioceses, as well as the recognition of the church as a key social and prophetic voice in the nation of Kenya and in the continent. Kappa is particularly grateful for the support of the province for hosting the Secretariat since her founding and for extending to the staff and the other assignees of the council various courtesies and hospitalities. We assure you of our continued prayers and partnership in all fronts of mission and ministry. We also did receive goodwill message from the General Secretary of Kappa, and his message is, we will continue to work together. We are part of this, plus other ecumenical bodies as the Anglican Church of Kenya, and we received goodwill message from the, from the National Council of Churches of Kenya, with a message from the General Secretary, who in the course of the week participated in the webinar discussions that we held through the week from Monday through to Friday, particularly discussing the Anglican Church's engagement in ministry and gearing towards this service of celebration. And he is present, the Reverend Canon Chris Kinyajui, with us in the worship service today. We also received goodwill messages from the African, All Africa Council of Churches, and we got this congratulatory message thanking the Anglican Church of Kenya on our achievement of a truly great milestone 
and supporting our commemoration by partnering in our feature in the newspaper on the 26th, the course of the week, by posting a congratulatory message. And he is present together with us in this worship service, the Reverend Dr. Vidon Mobeki, the General Secretary of ACC, accompanied by the Reverend Dr. Ridia Mwaniki. We appreciate your presence. We also received goodwill messages from the SMEP, Microfinance, sent by the CEO, Simon Kamore, and he sent a message as well as sponsored our webinar. Other partners that also sent us messages were the managing director, Mwangasa Wright, Remitted, and Katrin Shroff is also present with us in this worship service. These are a few among the many written messages of goodwill that we receive from within our church and externally from our partners and networks that we are part of in the ministry that we do. Your Excellency, and your grace, we thank also that within us the readership of the church has not only written to us messages of goodwill and thankfulness for the work we do, but we have with us present in this worship service four of our bishops. We have with us Bishop Joel Wawero, the Bishop of the Diocese of Nairobi. Let's appreciate him. He is also the chair of the Board of Finance for the Anglican Church of Kenya. We also have with us Bishop Joseph Mutungi, the Bishop of Maschapos Diocese. He is also the chair of the Board of Mission. We have with us Bishop Alphas Baya, the Bishop of Mombasa Diocese. And that is where the entry of the ministry of the Anglican Church of Kenya began at Rabai, moving on with the Mombasa Diocese, and from one diocese we have grown to be 40 dioceses. We also have with us Bishop Jacob Resunda, the Bishop of Maralo Diocese. Thank you. That's the team of bishops who are able to be in person uh, in our worship service today. Others have sent their messages and have joined us in the course of the week because we have had a lot of activities since Monday. Together with them and uh, the rest of us, we also have in attendance our Chancellor, Provincial Chancellor, uh, Tom Onyango and his wife. We also have the Deputy Provincial Chancellor, Mr. Peter Gashoi. They are present worshiping with us and those are officers within the learning of the church. We appreciate again that we are not only part of the wider communion and ecumenical bodies and as charged by ourselves, but we serve the nation of Kenya. And so this morning, we are so grateful that Your Excellency, you have graced the occasion of our worship service today. And you have been accompanied by Dr. Fred Matiang, the CS Minister of Interior and Coordination of government, National Government, we appreciate you, CS. You are also accompanied by Professor Margaret Kobia, the CS Minister of Public Service and Youth and Gender Affairs. We appreciate you, CS. You are also accompanied by the CS Cicere Karaoke, the, the CS of Ministry of Water and Sanitation. We appreciate you. We also, you are also accompanied by Honorable Joseph Kenya from the office, your office, we appreciate you. You are also accompanied by His Excellency the Governor of Kajiando, the Honorable Orerenku, we appreciate you. You are also accompanied by the appointee Deputy Governor for Nairobi, we appreciate you. On board are also a number of other dignitaries from 
different ministries that are in the worship service together with us and we are indeed very grateful and indebted to that love and gesture of ministry together because we are all part of this great nation serving in our different position roles in the nation so that we can honor God together. This is just to mention but a few of them that are together with us and them that have continued to wish us well as we continue serving. May God bless us as we progress. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Rosemary, Your Excellency, and all present. We are so grateful that you have come to join us. If I invite you to greet the congregation, allow me to emphasize two things. One has already been uh, mentioned, the Children and Teen Center. It is the imagination we have of the local church that must touch the life of the children before they grow. It's our flagship uh, project that we want to deliver in the shortest time possible. We have also grown to over 40 dioceses. Our provision uh, office headquarters is becoming smaller. It cannot accommodate all our bishops. Our next imagination is to build a proper provision headquarters for this province so that we can be able to engage with a law, uh, an, an enlarged mission ministry in the Anglican Church. With that and many other things that we are doing, we now want to take this opportunity, Your Excellency Sir, to welcome you to come and greet this congregation. These are your people and we thank you for coming and for gracing our 50th anniversary. Asante sana, karibu mwishikuwa rais. Thank you, Your Grace. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Your Grace, the Archbishop, our dear friend, Professor Pete, my Lord Bishops, clergy, the Anglican congregation, physically present and uh, those who are together with us on TV, on social media and other platforms. God is good and all the time. Uh, Your Grace, let me begin first and foremost by taking this opportunity to thank you for inviting me to join you on this auspicious occasion where we celebrate 50 years of the existence of this province. And at the very onset, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you, Archbishop, and indeed the entire Anglican community in Kenya on this joyous day where we have come together to thank God for the amazing work that he has been able to guide the men and women of this congregation to do over those 50 years and for the growth of this church from a single diocese to now 40 dioceses. And we are grateful to God and indeed the entire communion for that effort and work over 50 years. The second is to say that the Anglican church is inseparable from Kenyan society, you are part and parcel of the society and history of this nation. And I will go even a step further because not only have you been involved very heavily in 
not just spreading the gospel, but also in participating in education, in health, and many other social activities that have gone to improve the lives of your fellow citizens. But I think I can say without fear that the church has also been at the very center of the social, economic, and political history of our country. Beginning all the way, the late Archbishop Festa Solan, to Bishop Vitare, Manese Curia, up to even Archbishop Wabukala, you have played a central role in the social economic life of this country and have been instrumental in ushering in changes that have made Kenya a better place. And I urge you and encourage you, Archbishop, continue with that. Continue with that. We cannot separate church and the life of people. Yes, you are out there to save souls, but you are also out there to serve and to ensure that the will of your people is also followed and committed by their leaders. And I want to encourage you that you shouldn't stop that, you should continue. Because as my father used to say, you are indeed the church. You are the conscience of society. And we need you at the very forefront to ensure that we who have also been given the mandate by the people to execute on their behalf an agenda to improve livelihoods, we are also kept on our toes. I think the third thing I was going to say is that I am truly grateful even for the sermon that you have given today. Because I believe you have touched the very nerve of what we should be doing, not just as a church, but as a society. And the recognition that our role is not to give, but rather to teach our people to fish, to teach our people to live decent lives, to teach our people to not only be God-fearing, but also to know the spirit of service to their fellow man. And I was particularly touched about that congregation you mentioned in Malindi that you went to see and how they are working together with their community to empower young men. And I want to go and see it. And I promise you next time I'm in Malindi, I will make sure I pay a visit because I would like to see also what you say. And to say that I accept your offer because this is not work that can be done by government alone. It is a societal responsibility. So I accept your offer of us working hand in hand to be able to grow a generation of responsible, empowered, God-fearing citizens. And I look forward to working not just with you as the Anglican community, but indeed with the entire religious community for us to see what is it that we can do together to get our children away from the challenges, the problems that they are currently going through. So on that, take me as a partner, take my government as a partner, and I look forward to continuing to engage with you and others in the religious community as we seek solutions
to this most pressing problem. The third, which I must also, I don't know whether I am going to congratulate you, Archbishop, or the Provost through you, uh, is to say, you know, I am actually quite impressed today because uh, we have been having a serious COVID problem in this country and it is growing. And on an occasion like this, that is so central and critical to your history, you have managed to put together a service where you are obeying and following all the necessary laid down COVID protocols that have been set. Hongera sana. Hongezi. Hongezi, Hongezi sana. We are going through that very difficult time of saying now what do we do again? Do we close up? We shall be coming back to that, not today, but soon. But when I see this, it says that, you know, we don't have to. If only people would observe and would be caring of their fellow citizens, it is possible to keep COVID at bay and still be able to live and lead a normal life. I only wish that this issue of personal responsibility would be taken at heart. Because truly, we are facing a major challenge. And I remember when we said we are going to reopen, we said people take up the challenge of personal responsibility. And I'm glad to see the African Church has taken up that call of personal responsibility. And if we all did it, we could keep COVID at bay, we would reduce deaths, and we would be able to continue to drive our economic agenda. So I just wanted to say thank you, Pongezi Ongera, Atusome, from what we have seen today. Uh, we will continue to work together on this youth project. I think it is a very worthwhile cause. Uh, I'll talk about that later when we see my to I have uh, been given an invitation by one Uncle Paul, I don't know whether he's still here or whether he's gone back to his congregation. <laughs> so I wanted to tell him that uh, yes, I accept his invitation, but I have a particular reason for accepting. And that is so many, many, many years ago, probably before Uncle Paul was born, I, I was uh, one of the people who used to come to that Sunday school. So I would like now to re-attend in a different capacity and see whether things are <laughs> uh, uh, Uncle Paul, eh? Uh, I know you've got gray, gray, like any, I think, women in the cuisine in America. <laughs> Thank you Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, the rest can take their seats. For those very kind words and your commitment to partner with us, uh, Your Excellency, we have little booklets uh, to remind us about this journey and this celebration. 
we will uh, uh, hand you one copy and uh, a few of us. Uh, but uh, as I do that, I now want to take this opportunity to declare our 50th anniversary year on in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Part, part of our anniversary will include tree planting to improve the forest cover of our nation, and we are encouraging every Christian try to plant a tree according to the number of years. I'm now 56. I will strive to plant 56 trees in the near few days to come. And if we all can do that, we can be able to change.